What's good y'all? It's Thanks Justo back again with another video. This time, this isn't a Twitch highlight video. We are starting our journey into music content. Obviously, if y'all been paying attention to the streams, I go on there, I play games, make beats, chat with y'all. This time I just wanted to do something and just connect with y'all, just you know, really talk about whatever, honestly. Today we're gonna be reviewing Childish Gambino's last album. He just recently dropped his last album this past Friday called the What's it? What's his name? Oh, Vandal Stone and The New World. Apparently, that is a new movie also by Donald Glover that he's doing with his new studio as well, Gilga. But yeah, let me just go ahead and talk about it, bro. That's, I'm going to give off uh, what I like about the album, what I dislike about the album, my overall thoughts. And yeah, we're just going to rate it at the end. What I realized while I was playing the album is, wow, this is very... It kind of reminded me of... of of Kanye a little bit, really, if you're being honest. Like, it reminded me a lot about 808s and Heartbreaks, Yeezus. Just the overall, like, experimentation in the album is crazy. I feel like that's what a lot of people wasn't thinking of when they went to the album. Like, well, let me not say a lot. Just that sub-genre of people. You know, y'all you, know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. Like, the people that expect mainly rap out of an artist, you know? The same night that, you know, Childish Gambino dropped the album, I went on Twitter. I just wanted to see what they talked about before I even opened. They like, wow, this man dropped only three good songs. Everything else is buffoonery. I was like, hold on. The dude dropped Atta Vista. I think that's how I'm pronouncing it right. He dropped Atta Vista. And then he dropped, you know, it's crazy. I forgot the la the name of that last album, bro. But he had a red bone on it. But that album, too, he's not on the same, like, because of the internet timing, bro. Maybe because it's my eyes. I'm the only person seeing it. I don't have... It, maybe it's just me only seeing it, you know? I ain't gonna lie. At first, I went into it raw because I just recently found out that it was about a movie. I didn't really know about it. I think my first listen, I just went into it raw. I didn't know anything about the drop, none of that. I didn't do my research on it, none. And then my friend called me up. Well, we were, I met my friend calling him up. Jelani, he called me, he hit me up. He said, yo, you know, he did, this is like a soundtrack to a movie that he's making, right? Wop the wop. So I was like, oh, this is the soundtrack? Okay, let's go back to it. I went and watched the trailer for, uh, Band of Stone, good, good trailer. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not like excited for it. Like it's not gonna be a movie that I want to see like desperately in film. But like if I catch it on film, I'ma catch it. I'ma see it. You know what I'm saying? It don't look bad at all. It is a post-apocalyptic film. So hearing the album and then going back and looking at the trailer, it just makes sense. It just fits. The Drake disses. The Drake disses. There are obviously. Listen. I don't care what anybody says. There's Drake disses in there. When I was first, at first though, at first, I'll be honest. Like the first person, the person. Mm. She has a huge impact on music. First portion of the album, I was kind of like questioning it because you know how some fans be reaching, be like, oh, this is a shot at this. Ever since, re it's really been ever since the Kendrick and Drake beef. I feel like anything can be taken out of context amongst like rap lines because this, I mean, we just went, we just went past the greatest, probably are the greatest rap beef that we probably had in this generation. I mean, they obviously had beef too. You know, when Drake called, um, let me pull up the let me pull up the article right here too. Drake says that ah, uh, read the headline, Justin. Drake says this childish can be no hit is overrated and overrewarded. What hit is he talking about? He's talking about this is America. Childish can be no did an interview. I don't know what year it was, but it probably was like a few years. It was definitely a few years after uh, this is America. He told the interviewer pretty much like yeah, this is a uh, this is America was a Drake diss originally a Drake diss. But I think I think um it was like more so a joke more than a diss. If we're being honest, you know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't like pointed at Drake like the it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is America. If you go play it, we all know. It's not, it's mainly not at Drake. You know what I'm saying? It's mainly talking about, like, the racial constructions of the, did I even say that right? The racial structures in America, you know what I'm saying? But that's, that's 2018 and all that. I'm not going to talk about that song now, but you know how it is. It's the same story today, you know? Let me actually show y'all the lines that show that this is, po that some of the tracks is possibly a Drake this. The first song that caught my eye was Talk My Shit with Flo Millie and Amare. I'm, I have I have a, I have something to talk about with her too. It was this it was this line right here. He never got even. He's still just a critic. He's still in his feelings. Ha ha. They wanted me dead. They hate when I'm breathing. So I was like, hmm. You know, I was I was skeptical at first. I just I just kind of like okay. Let me see what you let me see what else you're talking about talking shit but when i see them they like where my hug at where my hug at it just seems like such a drake statement 
because it's corny. And we all know what Drake is. He's a cornball, bro. Like, he can be a cornball sometimes. Even though that's my guy. That's my goat. You know what I'm saying? I love that guy to death. You know, it's, it's tragic to see what happened with the, uh, the Kendrick and Drake beef. Kendrick washed his ass, man. We ain't gonna talk about that. We already know how that's gonna end up. Then we go into Yoshinoya. This is my favorite. This is probably one of my favorite songs on the album. First off, shout out Donald Glover, man. Because he was really... T it's forget talk my shit. Because honestly, let me talk about this too. Let me talk about this too while I'm on, while I'm on topic. The thing about talk my shit, he was talking about random shit on that song, bro. There's a tweet. I think I said it earlier in the video. He just be... He would make like the most beautiful song, right? And then he'll just put bullshit behind it. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly what happened. This man, hold up. What song? What song was before this? Steps Beach. Steps Beach is. <sighs> Steps Beach. Okay. That song is so beautiful. I love it. I put it on my playlist. I might just play it for my baby sister before ever she goes to sleep. I don't know why I said baby. She's about to turn 10 years old. Tweaking. But how you gonna make that beautiful track, right? You gonna talk my shit. And let me show you what the first line was when I, when I seen this, bro. Don't, don't, don't. Look, these first two lines, it don't count. Because the beat didn't even start deals in, okay? The beat, the beat didn't even start yet. He said, I'm hopping out the coop with my titties out. I'm gonna be real with y'all, bro. I'm not, I'm not playing that shit in the ox, bro. Like, I'm not playing, I'm not playing no shit that's gonna be talking about I'm hopping out, the, I'm hopping out coops with titties out. I mean, he's probably talking about drums. He could be talking about the drum mags, but like, I'm hopping out the cool with my titties out. I'm not saying that shit, man. I'm not saying that, bro. I'm a regular civilian, bro. Yoshinoya, though. Yoshinoya. He really was talking his shit behind the second part of the song. The first part, though. He just had a flows on it. You know what I'm saying? He was just flowing. But but there's a thing there's another thing too as well before i go back into before i do ah justin speak correctly before if i jump back into the yoshinoya lyrics another thing about talk my shit and yoshinoya in fact was that and many people know this as well you can go look at this a lot of people said that this was drake influence possibly as if aubrey graham wrote it obviously aubrey graham didn't he 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 ain't write this he ain't write this. This was jacked or mocked. I found your house on the app. People around you ain't slacked. They part. They oh, hold up. 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 Let, me re let me restart that. Let me restart that. Hold up. Hold up. I was in my mode. I was in my mode. I was in my mode. I found your house on the app. People around you ain't slacked. They plotting hard when you slacked. They got a gun in your back. This who you trust when you sleeping at night? Stop. Now stop it right there. Stop it right there. We got pillow talkers now, bro. We got some pillow talkers now. This is what we doing. We get some, we have some pillow talk action going on. Hey, if this is really beef, cause I don't know. I don't know if their history really, really means something. You know what I'm saying? Because Drake calling this is America isn't, he called it not the, not a good, not, not a top ranked song pretty much. That's pretty much what he said. He said it's not a, it's not, it's not up there. It shouldn't be that hype. It's not like that. Drake did come, like, did clap at that. He put him like, oh, I remember now. It was the first, it was the first show of his, it was all a blur tour. And he put on the stage, like, it was like a headline. He was pretty much saying that, oh, this is America was originally a Drake this, da, 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 da. If I was Donald Glover and I seen my name like that, I would just, well, I wouldn't even care. Because what am I getting mad about? You just put my name on the what am I really getting mad about? There's nothing to get mad about, you know? I'm sorry that I, this is supposed to be an album review, but I don't be talking about Yoshinoya. But this is this is this is what caught my eye. This is what really caught my eye really most of the time. We keep going in. He says, fuck with my kids, you fuck with your life, you fucking these hoes, I'm fucking my wife. Come on. If that isn't proof enough, okay. Okay, hold on. He said rather than have my my foot on their neck then they had then they hold on wait the dog fool that's the easiest word in the book god damn rather have my foot on their neck than they hand on the mic rather die a good man with a bad wife oh drake oh shit you got a childish gonna be able to read this to you bro this is my first time going into the lyrics Damn, this is really a 20v1, bro. This nigga, this nigga facing everything. 
anybody. Now I'm starting to understand why Kendrick said I'm passing up on this body like John Stockton. I get it now. It's too many options. Childish Gambino. If we being honest, in a one v one, Drake versus Donald Glover. Hey, bro, no glazing shit. Yo, no glazing shit. And I know somebody gonna glaze. I know somebody's gonna lie. I know somebody's gonna lie. Drake win it. We let's let's let's, let's go past the Drake. The Drake, let's, let's let's go past that, cause we we, we talked about it so much. I, well, I, for me, I've talked about y'all. Y'all let me know. Also, y'all let me know in the comments. Do y'all feel like the Drake versus Kendrick thing has been? It's just it's just kind of too much now, you know? Cause like it's been like what a month or two, two months now, and people are still talking about it to this day, even though it's like a big monumental thing, bro. It's over with, bro. People are living about this, bro. Like Kendrick beat Drake, ah! Drake didn't lose, ah! like it's not that deep, bro. But another the one thing about this album that sticks out to me is how atmospheric it is, you know? Knowing that it's also a soundtrack to a movie. It's like it put me in the movie. You know what I'm saying? I got a story. I actually got a funny story to tell. On the once on this song on the album, I had a vivid memory. I just, I'm not lying to y'all. I had a, I had a vi real memory. Really, really did. I think it was Happy Survival. Let me tell y'all a story, all right? One time, I'm out in Florida with my family. Can you focus, camera? We go by the pool where they have like a little entertainment thing. Everyone's over there. Yada, 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 right? So I pull up, I see what's going on, you know what I'm saying? Mind you, let me tell you my archetype, mind you. I'm in the, I'm in the same build that I'm in right now, okay? Goatee, mustache lined up, the cut is done, the do-rag will not be coming off because this is a fresh cut. My corner's fading, I'm looking clapped, can't do it. I'm looking straight though, I'm looking good. I'm seeing, I'm seeing hula hoo dancers, I'm seeing Hawaiian shit, you know what I'm saying? Whole time is Polynesian, I ain't know. I'm learning new things. Polynesian girl, she dead in front of me. You know what I'm saying? I fell in love. Let's just put it like that. I ain't gonna say too much. I fell in love right then and there. And it felt like I was listening to that song again. And I was remembering that same Polynesian woman from the same little hotel entertainment thing, whatever they were doing. I remembered her. I remember her and I was like, damn, this boy Donald Glover. Donald Glover. Okay, Justin. Okay. Yeah, we need to put you back in speech class, buddy. Nah, Donald Glover really is one of the ones. As a producer, too, I feel like uh, child, Donald Glover's or Childish Gambino's production style is also underrated because, like I said earlier, how, how the album gave me more of a Yeezus kind of feel to it. When I say that, I mean that as there's so many genres in this album. Well, it's not so many genres, but it's just like the way how it bounces back and forth from genre to genre, it just reminded me of Yeezus and how experimental some of the sounds are. Like I said, it just reminds me of Yeezus. That's just me though. It, it might, it probably, it's probably different for y'all. Y'all let me know in the comments, please. But you know, it is how it is. Two things. There's two things I didn't like about the album. Really two things. One is some of the features. I'll be honest. The Fouché, uh feature. I didn't really like that song too much. That's just my personal preference. I played the, I played the album back five six times i just don't like the song you know what i'm saying yeats feature i don't like it but i know it will grow on me here's my reason why okay when you go back to that song donald glover did fucking amazing on that song he just oh my god he just oh my god bro like yeah, yeah. but on yeats verse the song with these verse on it, the whole song just reminds me of a Shrek movie. I told this to Jelani too when I called him about it. It just reminds me of a Shrek movie. The donkey is Childish Gambino. He's walking through the shrimp. As you can hear through the sample, y'all hear frogs cronking and, and all that type of stuff. And then all of a sudden, as we get more deeper to the song, Yeet comes in out of nowhere, deep voice. <laughs> And the verse was so short too. The verse was so short too. So while I'm playing this album, I'm picturing, oh my god. I'm picturing in like a donkey. I'm donkey right now, okay? I'm in the POV of donkey. Yeet voice come in. I'm like, oh shit, it's Shrike. Wagwan Shrike. That was all that's me yapping, you know what I'm saying? I'm probably gonna edit chop this up when I get back to it. It's probably gonna be a whole lot of buffoonery when I go back to it. I think I already told y'all my least favorite song. Least favorite song out of the whole thing. I did say it was the Fu the Fouché song. It's e between either that or I think it was got to be. Yeah, I didn't I didn't really like I didn't like got to be either. It just I just it's just one of those songs you just you just don't got a feeling for. It. And I just didn't have a feeling for got to be. So those two are like battling out for my least favorite song right now but my favorite songs it's gotta be 
It's gotta be, uh, hold on, let me look back at the track list again. <laughs> Steps Beach, of course, like I said earlier. Yes, you know, it is questionably a Drake diss. He was rapping his ass off there. I gotta give my hands for that, bro. I gotta clap it up for him. He was, he was rapping his ass off for that. Probably Happy Survival, you know? Because Happy Survival is just, it's just, just an instrumental, you know what I'm saying? Something to just play, you know? I'm feeling the vibe. I'm hearing the drums. I'm seeing the Polynesian girl dance in front of me. And I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in that mode, you know? I'm in that mode. The overall rating for the album, I gotta give it a solid 8.10. It's not a bad, it's not bad. But listen to me when I say this, okay? So 8.10 off of your listening experience, off of like a good thorough listening experience, it's an 8.10. But as an overall album, I'm talking about like replay value, I'm really just talking about replay value now, you know? Am I gonna come back to this album? Probably not like that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm probably gonna go back to the songs that I actually like, but going back and play like a full playthrough of the album again? Hmm, am I likely to do it? Hmm, am I a Donald Glover fan like that? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know, I don't think I will. I don't think I will. But through this listening experience, I loved it, I liked it, eight out of 10. That's just my, that's my opinion. Y'all let me know if I should do more music review or like just do more music topics. Uh, this is my first time doing it. So I'm gonna try to get myself accustomed to doing this or like get this more set up more properly. But yeah, 